Welcome to another video everyone. You've seen me do a few pieces now using white wax and I've also done a couple of videos where I've applied a white wash. In today's video I'm going to be using Minwax Pickled Oak Penetrating Stain. All three of these have similar looks but are completely different products and have pros and cons. So I'm going to show you the differences between them and when you should maybe choose one over another. This sad little dresser I picked up for $7.50 from a local thrift shop is the perfect candidate for this compare and contrast video. It's got some finish issues and smells a little musty, but I'm going to try to turn this one around. Let's get into it! My name is Angie and I'm the one behind Transcend Furniture Gallery. It's my mission to keep as many pieces of furniture as possible out of landfills. Sometimes I paint, sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. Okay, so having a good look at this piece, it's solid wood top, solid wood frame and legs. The drawers themselves, the faces are not solid wood, it's actually veneer sandwiching particle board. And the joinery on the drawers is not that great either, it's just nailed in, there's no dovetails or anything like that. But even so, this is still a really cool piece of furniture and definitely worth saving. There's unfortunately a bit of a musty smell and that's my guess as to why it was priced so cheap. Yes, it's a thrift store, but I don't know where you guys live, where we live. Thrift stores have gotten pretty expensive and it's hard to find a decent piece of furniture for under 40 or 50 bucks at a thrift shop. So the fact that this was only $7.50 tells me that they noticed the smell and didn't think anyone was going to buy it unless they marked it so cheaply. So yay for me, <laughs> got myself a good deal here. I'm giving this piece inside and out a very thorough cleaning with some heavy duty cleaning vinegar and leaving it outside to dry. A few of you have been asking where Willow's been. She's here, she's hanging out. <laughs> Okay, this piece has been drying in the sun now for several hours. It's completely dried out. I've got these two products here. One is a brush on, one is a spray. This is an odor blocking primer and it's fantastic at covering up smoke smells, um, musty smells. Sometimes you need two coats. I'll warn you right now if you try it and you do one coat and say it doesn't work, give it one more try. Give it another coat and see if that helps for you. I find it quite effective and I use both of these products a lot. So I just sprayed the entire inside and I'm also going to do a spray here on the back. These backer boards are notorious for soaking up nasty smells. <laughs> Sometimes I replace them if it's too bad but I usually try this first to just save me the hassle of having to get a new piece and replace it. So I'm going to be stripping the sides. You can see my stripping brush here looks a little weird but as soon as it comes in contact with the stripper it's going to completely um, become malleable again. and. Good as new really, that allows me to keep using the same brush over and over again, which I like. These 3M stripping pads are fantastic for removing areas of finish that you couldn't get off with your scraper for some reason. If you dip it in just a little bit of the stripper, you'll find it a lot easier to get these stubborn bits off. Mineral Spirits is great for scrubbing on after you've stripped a surface. It just helps clean off any residual residue and prepare the surface. Now I'm not loving the wood grain on these drawers and at this point I've decided I'm going to paint them. Here's another way to strip a finish. I've got a card scraper here as well as one of these paint scrapers. I prefer this scraper for large areas, it's just a little bit easier on the hands and then I tend to use the card scraper for delicate areas like trim, moldings and around the edges, especially a veneer, but you'll see here in a second I'm actually going to use that card scraper on the edge. So 
So there are some pretty messy repairs here <laughs> on this piece. They have glued these drawers, like completely glued every surface possible, including the sides. Now this split, I would normally try to repair, but they have it glued in so well that I'm afraid if I even attempt to pull it out, I'm going to just wreck it. So it's doing the trick. I'm just going to leave it as is and just punch down these nails a bit because they're sticking out a little too far. There is this one corner of one drawer that's a little bit loose, so I'm just going to put some glue in there, <laughs> might as well finish the glue up. You can see here too, they're horrible repair, like they didn't even bother to wipe away the excess glue. So I'm just going to scrape that off and the rest will come off with the sander. I'm using a 150 grit sand pad here to sand pretty much the entire drawer smooth. Where there's a little bit of a smell, I want to sand these down and reseal them. And to do that, I'm using the other order product, um, same company, just a different method of applying it. And I prefer using this for the drawers, it just goes on a little bit thicker and I just, I don't know, I just prefer it. <laughs> I'm sanding down this top. There is some water damage, but I'm fairly confident that I'm going to be able to get it out with the sander. It seems fairly surface. Um, there are some deeper gouges too. We'll just sand through. I'm going to do two different sandings, one with 150 grit and a finished one with 220 grit. And hopefully that'll take care of most of these issues. So there's a few small gouges on the face of the drawers where the veneer is chipped. This is called quick wood. It's like a wood epoxy. It's a two part product. So you basically cut off only what you need because once you mix it, that's it, you have to use it. So just cutting off a small amount. Just knead it with your fingers until you have a consistent color like this. And then you just apply it like any other wood putty. And this stuff dries so hard. I really like it for areas that need patching on the edges of things because it just it holds up a little bit better than like spackle or regular wood filler. It just dries so hard. It's great. One note about this, it's a bit like Bondo where it's extremely hard to sand once it's dry. So you want to try to get off as much of the excess as possible before it hardens too much. Starting my final sanding now before I apply the pickling stain. I generally won't sand anything finer than 220 if I'm going to be staining it. It just doesn't absorb stain properly. So this is a Minwax product. It's pickled oak. It's a penetrating stain. The first time I used it, I didn't like it, but I realized reading here that you're actually supposed to apply two coats. With a normal stain, you can apply a second coat if you want to, but you don't have to. But with this, they are literally in the instructions recommending two coats. So that's what I'm going to do today and we'll see if I like the outcome better than the first time I used it. The stuff is pretty easy to use. You just brush it on and let it sit for, I think it's between five and 15 minutes and then you wipe off the excess, let that coat dry and then do your second coat between four and six hours later. I've already applied my first coat of Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Pebble, which is a very soft gray. I'm doing my second coat here. You can really see the difference between the color when it's dry versus when you first put it on. It always throws people off sometimes seeing the color in the jar because it often dries a little bit darker. 
So these were the original poles from the piece. I'm choosing to go a little bit of a different route. We're turning this mid-century piece into more of a kind of a farmhouse vibe, for lack of a better term. So I've got these brand new poles and these little knobs that I'm going to spray paint to match the poles. This color is great. It's a nice soft flat black that's not too shiny. I use it all the time. You see it in several of my videos. I really love this product. This way too, I can hang on to this hardware. I have a little box here with various mid-century pulls and you never know, these might come in handy on a piece that's maybe missing a knob. That's usually what I use these for. So I've already applied my two coats of pickling stain here. I didn't show the second because it's exactly the same as the first <laughs> in terms of the process. Because this is an oil-based stain, you have to wait a fair amount of time before you seal. I'm using Minwax Polycrylic, which is water-based, so it's actually been a couple of days. Okay, so before the big reveal, let's recap here. Things I like about whitewash. You can actually choose the exact color or tone you want. You can do white, you can do gray, pretty much any color you want to use. It can be used over raw wood, finished wood, or paint. There's a wide range of top coat options because, I mean, it depends on the paint you're using, but most of the time you're going to use a water-based paint, so you have a lot of options for top coating. It can be painted over, depending on what you use to top coat it with. Super easy cleanup uh, with just soap and water, and you can control the opacity of it just by adjusting the water and paint ratio. I would say the downsides of whitewashing is that it's not as beginner friendly. It can be hard to get even coverage, especially on large surface areas, so it takes a little bit of practice. And also it has a tendency to raise the wood grain, so you're going to have to deal with that. But when everything goes right, look at how beautiful whitewashing can be. I love that you have the option to use pretty much any color you want. I use a 50-50 paint water ratio. Raw silk is my go-to for a warm white. Lamp white is when I want a cooler white. White wax. What's great about wax is that you can create very unique looks with layers of different colored waxes. It doesn't have to be just white. I'm just speaking about waxes in general here. It's fairly easy to work with. It is its own top coat um, and it cleans up with mineral spears. So the cons is that you can't use any other top coat. Nothing is gonna stick to wax. For that same reason, you can't paint over it. You have to remove the wax if you're gonna paint. It's also very difficult to apply it without a proper wax brush. You can use a rag, but it's no fun, trust me. And it's also vulnerable to heat. Much like candle wax melts, so does this wax. So if you put something hot on it, you're gonna have an issue. I personally wouldn't recommend it for like a dining room tabletop. But I do love the soft, subtle sheen of wax and to the touch wax is just, it's so soft feeling. It's almost like there's nothing there at all. These are the two white waxes I use the most. Art Mines is a Michaels brand and the one on the right is Fusion Mineral Paint Liming Wax, which is a little bit whiter than the Michaels version. And the Pickling Stain. This is super easy to use, very beginner friendly. You can find it almost anywhere. There are some cons though. It has a fairly strong odor, so you're going to need to apply it in a well-ventilated area. You can't really change the color or tone of it. It is what it is. And I'm not sure how effective it would be on darker woods. Also, because it is oil-based, you may need to wait a little bit before you do a water-based top coat. If you're doing an oil-based top coat, not as big a deal. <laughs> Those are the three ways that I've lightened wood. Hopefully most of you have found this helpful in some way. Now it is time for the reveal of this gorgeous dresser. 